Well, thank you. I'm excited to share this with you. The opening slide here shows my beloved cousin and friend, Andrea, from New Jersey. And we are in an historical society there in New Jersey. And she's using a copy stand with her camera to copy records we found there at the Historical Society. And I'll be talking with you more about the usefulness of a copy stand and tell you where you can at least one website that has them for sale. So let me give you a digital camera success story. Several years ago, I, in doing my research, began to realize that I needed, a lot, had a lot of ancestors from New Jersey, and I needed lots of birth, marriage, and death certificates um, from the New Jersey State Archives. And, and you can see on the screen that uh, New Jersey New Jersey was the second state in the United States to begin keeping vital records. So there's a, a, a lot of good vital records available. I figured I needed at least 125 certificates. At $25 a certificate ordered from the New Jersey Board of Health or the New Jersey Archives, um, that was a little intimidating. Plus it take several weeks for them to send it to you. And I realized that we were talking something over $3,000. And so I went to Plan B, which was planning a research trip. And I made a list using my legacy program and did a search and asked uh, the program to give me everybody who was either born or died or married in New Jersey. And legacy printed me this very useful list of names that I wanted to find on a trip to the New Jersey archives. Uh, Andrea, who's pictured here again, and my sister and I had the privilege of spending about 10 days researching in the state of New Jersey. And we spent two days at the New Jersey State Archives. And with three of us, that meant we had three digital cameras. Um, you will notice that Andrea's camera is clipped up here at the top of the microfilm reader to the film reader. And I'll be talking with you more about a, a clamp like that. And her particular camera has a nice feature of she's able to advance and click and click with the little thing that she's holding in her hand. That's a little more pricey. Uh, but if you have a camera or you can afford to buy a camera that has a clicker like that, why for us genealogists, that sure makes it nice. Our trip was very, very successful. We got 127 certificates. You'll notice that the originals on microfilm are a black background with white lettering. But taking the certificates then into uh, Photoshop or Picasa, I was able to reverse them. So um, it, it was awesome. Those are very readable, very useful certificates that we were able to get. Also at the archives while we were there, we were able to copy newspaper records, Bible records, mortgages, probates, colonial documents. This pay, uh, image that you see on the right is um, I have a, an ancestor whose name was Graham or Graham, and this is actually a Bible page of that family that I was thrilled to find at the New Jersey State Archives, and that's a copy taken with my digital camera. So copying genealogical records using a digital camera will open many, many new doors for you. For instance, at the Family History Library, whether it's a, a local family history center or whether you're actually in Salt Lake. One day I was in Salt Lake at the Family History Library and this lady was sitting at the microphone reader next to me and I talked with her and she gave me, showed me her camera and I will share with you a couple of things I learned from her um, that she has learned using a digital camera. Also you can visit relatives. Here we are visiting a, um, a cousin in New Jersey and she had uh, books full of pictures of ancestors. And I wanted to show you here that with the camera, I was able to, this is the quality that I was able to take on the original click. 
then when I came home and started working with it, again, by taking the picture into uh, Photoshop or Photoshop Elements or Picasa, it's really possible to brighten and clean up these photographs very nicely. And of course, having your digital camera in a setting like that is priceless. Also, you can go to archives, historical societies, and, and cemeteries, and, and copy records. Here, um, my daughter and I are at the Family History Library in Salt Lake copying French parish records. And um, again, the picture of Andrea on the right with the copy machine, or copy stand. So you can see the use of the copy stand in two different settings. And this is a, uh, the pages that we were able to get. I've copied 40 volumes of these French birth, marriage, and death records. And the miracle is that the Genealogical Society in Normandy is now going into the original parish records that are on microfilm. And they have the experience to be able to read these records where it's pretty challenging for, for me. And I have been blessed to, to find about 3,500 of my ancestors just this last year by, by these books. And this is what the original microfilms look like. So I think you can see how happy I was to be able to go to the library and take advantage of the wonderful efforts that the um, Normandy Genealogical Society is doing for us. Now, there's a good question. What about using a scanner? A scanner is very useful. For one thing, a good scanner is generally less expensive than a good digital camera. Um, scanners can be set for high resolution picture taking more easily than a digital camera. You can set a digital camera, but it's a little more complicated. You definitely would have to use your manual to figure that out. And of course, with photographs on a scanner, they are pressed flat by the scanner cover, so you avoid distortion or focus problems. And so there really is a place for a scanner in our world. Also, family history libraries and some of the family history centers have this wonderful microfilm scanning machine that you can copy the images onto a, a flash drive. And uh, that is a very, very good way of being able to copy information. However, there are times when a, a digital camera really does work the best. For instance, a camera is portable. And you can copy photos or a letter collection at a relative's home or tombstones in a cemetery or the records in an archive. Larger items sometimes won't fit on a scanner. In fact, I'm going to be showing you portraits that we were able to get. And those portraits are probably four by three feet. I mean, they are huge paintings that were done in the 1850s. In in Philadelphia. And of course, you can't scan a thing like that. And so we went with our digital cameras to copy those portraits. Um, delicate albums that uh, can be photographed more easily than placing them on a scanner, which, when they're very delicate, can be hard on the album itself. And um, once you're set up and understand how to use your digital camera effectively, it really is a much faster way to copy things than with a scanner. For instance, all of those French parish record books that my daughter and I copied at the Family History Library, we really moved through those. Um, it was a neat two-person project. So this, this summer, I spent eight, six weeks with my brother and his wife. And we went to Kansas, Missouri. Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia following. And this is Carrie, the lady in the pink shirt, is my sister-in-law. And we were tracing her relatives. And the beauty, the reason I chose to show you this is here we are. You can see Carrie's digital camera sitting on the couch next to her. And by going to this lady's home, she had 
many albums of photographs and newspaper clippings and obituaries and so forth that we were able to copy with the digital camera. We went with her out to the cemetery where her husband is buried, and that was a very sweet experience. And so having a digital camera in this kind of a setting is priceless. Now let's talk about some features that you might want to look for when you're buying a camera. Um, I would really recommend that you go on the internet and go to a good store and talk with people about digital cameras because um, the one that I have, I purchased about five years ago. This size card, we're going to be talking about saving images to a card. Mine will hold a two gigabyte card. There are now cameras available that will hold up to 24 gigabytes and more, or 40 gig, whatever. So keep asking questions. It's a very expanding field. There are a couple of features that I really want to emphasize that are very useful for a genealogist. One is the function setting. You'll see on, this is my camera, and you'll see on the front of my camera is a button called function setting. And I'm going to be talking with you about five different functions that really help you get better pictures when you're doing genealogy photography. And that's uh, a feature that you really would be glad to have on your camera. Some of the less expensive digital cameras that people have shown me when I've given this presentation at conferences, some of them don't have a function setting. And therefore, they are stuck in automatic. And we really would prefer for genealogy to be able to get out of the automatic setting into the, the uh, program setting. And I'll show you more about that. But to do that, you do have to have a, a function button <laughs> of one kind or another on your camera. Something else that I, I want to show you, many of you are familiar with the, the good old-fashioned way of taking a picture. You look through a little hole on your camera and see what you want to photograph and push the button. A wonderful new feature, um, it's been around at least five years because I bought my camera with this feature, and I'm very glad someone had recommended it to me. It's this LCD preview screen, and I put this other picture of my camera on here so that you could see this is what my camera on the left looks like when the screen is folded flat in the camera. And you look at the screen to see what you're going to take. Or you can flip it out like you see in the upper picture here. And that is extremely useful. To, uh, and I'll show you a couple of pictures. When you're taking images, um, it, to be able to do this, it's very, very useful. This man has his camera looking into a mirror. And he did this purposely to show you that with that screen and, and your lens, you, you're copying exactly what you see. So the picture of the man is what he saw in the screen and in the mirror of himself on that lens. And that is such a useful feature. Here I am at the Family History Library copying those French records with my uh, copy stand. And I am being able to look into the screen where the red arrow is pointing. And I'm being able to see exactly what I'm copying without having to look down at the book. And my hand is resting over the camera and the the support for the camera, and I'm just clicking, clicking, clicking the button. Um, and so that screen has been priceless for being able to, to copy lots of good genealogy records. This is my son's camera, and he went with me to the Family History Library to help me copy some French records. And his camera has this other kind of a 
screen that tilts out. It's also an LD, uh, LCD preview screen. And he was copying uh, French 